I don't know how to handle right now because okay. my videos have gone viral again on YouTube and place. Right? Yeah. People don't know that about me because I do use she, her. Uh -huh. But I definitely don't act like one typically, I guess you could say. Because mm -hmm. a lot of it's, there's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't sound like one, for instance. Uh, and I still carry myself the same way as I always have been. Right? Yes. But... Hello everyone, welcome back to Sevi Talks where we cover a range of topics from Genshin Impact to gaming to guests and stories. I am your host Sevi and today I am joined by Rin Tai Cho. Hello. Hello, thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, you are the first guest of the year. I am so glad that you are here to start us off in the new year. I actually just noticed your outfit, like you have several pins mm -hmm. here. Oh yeah, like usually on the cardigans and sweaters i wear i just threw like some pins on oh that's so that's cool all. that was like some good asmr yeah. too <laughs> oh was it yeah so to start us off actually i wanted to go straight into some genshin stuff because okay i feel like there's a lot that has passed since the last episode especially with the release of version 4.2 that was like mm. a huge patch for genshin and i haven't gotten yeah. to chat with anyone about it and i'd love to chat it chat about it with you so what sure. was your impression of version 4.2 the the big I banger need a reminder what was 4.2 again it was <laughs> it was the finale of the archon quest so spoilers for the major archon quest here on skip to the next timestamp if you don't want that <laughs> oh okay what was the event for that one the fremenay one right yeah it was the fremenay okay. one yeah okay so what did i think about it yeah it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was fantastic. Uh, I think that one started with us going to Poisson, right? To go see Navia? Yeah. Yeah, the aftermath of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was probably the first time I've ever cried on stream to a quest. Oh. Like ever in my life. 100%. <laughs> you know, I was surprised. I was surprised at how early into the quest there was like mm. that crying moment. Yeah, just try to hit see right away like what's going on and what happened and everything. Yeah. Um yeah, it was it was an amazing quest. I enjoyed it quite a bit actually. Um I also just like a lot of things and I don't really hate anything. Even if like people were to be very critical of something, I don't normally talk about it too much because I'm just like, yo, that was neat, but like all my friends have these very uh detailed very thought out thorough like analysis of like said thing and i'm just like mm, oh, okay sure <laughs> <laughs> right not nothing against it right but i i don't know i just don't get up i'm not upset's not the right word i guess i just don't feel like it's that bad i guess okay here's my hot take mm -hmm. the inazuma storyline and all that mm -hmm. i was cool with it <laughs> i liked it so <laughs> whatever i guess okay a nice yeah. hot take to start us off <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like um at least as 4.2 there wouldn't have been a lot to criticize i mean like the, the community wide mm. reception it was already very good with like the impact of it i feel like fontaine started the storyline with really good pacing and pacing is something mm. that that has been like a genshin storytelling problem for a while at least maybe if they're maybe on your end like it's not crit criticism worthy, but mm. do you feel like it's a significant positive jump? Oh, big time. It's just Genshin in general from like 1.0 to now mm -hmm. has just improved leaps and bounds with how the story is presented, uh, what's being told. I think they're a little bit wordy in some areas, but other than that, I think they do a fantastic job, especially with like their cinematography, the voice acting, yeah, uh, kind of their way of being subtle about lore, hints here and there right yeah i feel like voice acting was was like a big highlight of 4.2 especially mm, with yeah. well i play english version at amber lee yeah, connor's for farina e2 yeah. Yeah. yeah that was huge i mean everyone was like so drawn in and so impressed mm, with that yeah um yeah just amber lee connor's just work there from going like you know the kind of bratty farina persona to that i was just like holy crap that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the yeah. the subtle difference also between the farina persona and then like the meek human farina mm. and then fosalor yeah. herself was so yeah. cool oh, that's right we got farina's a character quest from that too didn't we yeah yeah that one 
that one I enjoyed quite a bit, especially just like the relatability to how Frina is just now after the whole thing. Yeah, she's so human. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's just very human of just like I just stay home and eat the same thing and just do the thing I like. That's it. Yeah, like, that's awesome. It's it's so it. cute. <laughs> and she has her yeah. own apartment and everything. And then like no. that's that's the best part. Like an apartment on the second floor that she flooded by accident <laughs> and she tried to go pick a fight with someone because she got a few uh, vision. Well, not someone like a one of the legends or whatever they're called oh local, local legends, legends. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i was reading into her lore a little bit it's very funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah i f i like how they show her after the fact because mm. like farina's story it definitely doesn't end in the archon quest unlike a lot no, of definitely not yeah unlike a lot of previous yeah. um and yeah. someone that significant for sure will have something more to come <clears throat> yeah and i love seeing her pop up like she she's in mm. the event of version 4.3 now yeah and that's so cool like there's continuity there she's she's doing her whole you know yeah. human career arc yeah she's just kind of living through all throughout 4.x right now just doing whatever she does like building her character now like who she is make making an identity that's not the archon anymore so yeah that yeah no i like i remember it was a uh, there was a creator that tweeted this out how they found farina very bratty and they didn't like her and i think after 4.2 came out they quoted their own tweet and said i made a mistake yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that i think there so. are like a lot of people who had that opinion yeah. especially at the start i liked farina because she was kind of like, insufferable and annoying yeah. and bratty it's like this is great like it's kind of pissing me off but this is a great character <laughs> and you learn the whole reason why you're like oh my god yeah. <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> you can't hate her anymore <laughs> yeah bless her <laughs> right give her everything please yeah so yeah, yeah. bless her poor little heart <laughs> yeah 4.2 was like probably the it's, not, it's gonna be a pretty bold statement to say but definitely one of the best uh patches we've had so far with genshin impact i think i would agree yeah the release of the characters the story the event was really good too like the story with Fremenet mm. or Fremenet, sorry it was just a very well done patch overall yeah in my opinion. it was mm. and i mean you are not like a stranger to combat and challenges oh, no. and stuff <laughs> definitely and we'll talk more about definitely that later not. but yeah. like i'm interested in how you liked farina's combat kit and maybe like fontaine characters and in, in, so far oh okay so farina um it took me a while to just kind of like figure out exactly how she worked mm -hmm. but the way that she kind of brought back healers into just like builds was amazing so i would hope to see she get uh frequent banners not just like every year yeah like some characters but <laughs> i guess being technically an archon she will have some more features mm -hmm. uh nuviet is insane mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but i think that's good considering who he is so his kit should be pretty broken yeah it's it's uh, lore accurate <laughs> yeah very lore accurate Risley was a bit weird i was hoping he'd be a bit more like, like hazo in some ways right uh -huh. but i don't know his kit just feels kind of not very strong if you don't have constellations for it. I I get I totally get what you mean because he has that like mm. fifty percent HP condition thing that yeah that like tur turns off the the buff when it reaches yeah, that point. Right. And mm. I also feel like Risley's could kit could have been a little bit more exciting in some ways yeah underwhelming is what I would say underwhelming like, it could have been more yeah considering like all the scenes he got how he is. And then it's just like, you know, you got like a combo punch. That's true. An like, And it's just like, all right, can you do some more? <laughs> please? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Can you true. like grapple people and stuff like that? But that'd be like probably introducing another mechanic in the Genshin Impact. So. <laughs> like choke slamming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My chat, when they saw him choke that one dude in his story quest <laughs> and they were not saying what I think they shouldn't be saying. <laughs> right and i'm like chat stop that but the funny part is about that you can tell genshin even plays into it a little bit mm -hmm. very in very subtle ways mm -hmm. too so i remember just like one line was like oh i get to have fun torturing him or something just like it should have been me <laughs> not him just like god guys please genshin knows their audience 
<laughs> yeah, they know their audience. Well, just Hoyo in general, they know their audience very well. Yeah, so that's that's, true. that's nice to know. It's nice to see. Mm. So four point two banger patch characters. Yeah, banger patch. So far, Nivella and yeah. Farina are definitely standouts there. Yeah, I touched on earlier how you are definitely not a stranger to combat and challenges and oh, yeah. such. No. And <laughs> I think one of the things you are most known for is being an Amber main. How did that yes. happen? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, when I first started making Genshin content, it was just kind of like a let's play kind of style thing, right? So I was playing Genshin already. So I was like, why not just make a video about it while I play? Because I didn't know where it was going to go at the time. I was doing other content before that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just kind of talking about what I was doing and showing what people I do. But the characters at the time that I was playing was Kuching, Amber, Noel, and Barbara. Oh. but I have a background with a lot of FPS gaming, so shooting games, right? So I see. I was like, I can do a lot of stuff with Amber. I can just like snipe and light fires on everything and like things die, like not super fast like other guys, but I do it pretty efficiently anyway because I'm really good. Yeah. At the brag. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, gamer skills. So, yeah. So as I was getting to know Genshin, I noticed uh, people had like, you know, their tier lists and like what characters you should build and. How do they compare to others? Amber's constantly always on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And I'm more of a fan of like underdog characters and things. Mm -hmm. So that kind of drawn me toward it. Just be like, all right, this sounds like it's going to be a challenge. So I'll do that, right? So I guess in order to do that, I need to try to max out my Amber as best as I can. So out came all the gacha videos of spending on standard banner, which everyone absolutely thought I was insane to, <laughs> right? But I was like, this is what I want to do, you guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, because there's no other way you could get her constellations other than wait every few months, months, I guess. Yeah. yeah, just to get an extra one. Um, I remember like when Amber did come back to the shop, my Twitter notifications were just like flooded with people saying, <laughs> "Rin, Amber's in there. You can get her right now. You can save." It was like, "Oh, okay, cool, <laughs> right?" But we ha there was like some amazing, uh, just like moments and times with that too. A lot of people were supporting it. It was amazing. So like that's kind of how like my career started to go. Like everyone came in to see this weird Amber main playing the game. Like, why are you playing this character? You're just so much, so many other people. But this is interesting because I started posting like little feats that yeah Amber could do that most others at the time couldn't do yet, right? Because mm -hmm. I start I understood the mechanics faster than most people. I would say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just kept up with that. And as every patch came out, I was like, all right, I'll send Amber to do it. And I did. <laughs> and currently, Amber. I still have been able to do that. Yeah. Everything in Genshin right now, I've been able to beat with Amber. Maybe not Spiral Abyss completely. Mm -hmm. I have before. Mm -hmm. I just don't really try as hard these days because I'm a little bit tired. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I, I definitely understand why people would like cheer for you and root for you as an Amber mm. main. I mean, it is the whole underdog thing. You pick an underdog character, it's going to yeah, yeah, turn yeah. you into Everyone like... Everyone will be like, yo. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an underdog battle sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. And it's not just that, too. Like, Amber is a character I like, too. Um, okay. She portrays that uh, energetic personality, friendly, but kind of level-headed at the same time. But, yeah. you know, tries very hard, sometimes messes up. But, you know, just smile on her face, just keeps going kind of thing. That's the kind of character that I am very drawn to. Mm. Uh, not as, like, character that... I guess most people would play Genshin because, haha, everyone's attractive. I want to play this character or something like that, right? I'm drawn to Amber because I want to be like Amber, mm -hmm. rather, right? I was like, I want to be this kind of person. So okay. Amber was that character. Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, that's that's a nice reminder because we don't see Amber a lot these days. No. And especially being caught up with like Fontaine and the recent events. We only see her every yeah. time we go back to Mondstadt. Yeah, and, and I am... I'm Coping so hard for Liyue. Ah, uh, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, really let Amber that, travel. <laughs> let please, her show coping up. coping <laughs> so hard. I was like, please let her go find her grandfather. We know where he is. Send her there. Oh. Come on. Yeah, and that whole thing with uh, Gaming coming out and what his profession is and I noticing, like, some relation. Well, not relations, but like like similarities. similarities and connections. Yeah, it's like, oh, they're both... Oh. that protect things that's interesting Ooh. why is he showing up all i have another theory about it too right but it's very like definitely pulling <laughs> for things right but i feel like genshin does this sometimes they hide things in text yeah yeah and kind of allude to it in a weird way but it still counts right yeah this is literally like in tweets though from, <laughs> from genshin twitter <laughs> i was just like no this detail this detail i was doing that the other day i had to put that together sometimes oh really so. if there's ever an amber theorist <laughs> 
I I just went off like the moment I saw that I just started like throwing all my information into a thing and everyone was like you're right yeah. what <laughs> right <laughs> they were all very excited all of a sudden so I don't know if it's gonna be true it might be wrong right okay at the end of it all but right nothing's proven yet so yeah I mean hope, we'll hoping too that we we get to see more of her in yeah the I just yeah I just want to see more story for her so badly <laughs> in that arc Please. yeah and no other archer has gotten your attention oh. All the archers have like gone through me. Um, I think the next one would be Farzan, just ah. how her kit works. And a lot of people again put her as like, oh, she's only a support for Xiao. Mm -hmm. Wrong. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I've, Farzan does more DPS than Amber, like easily. And she's really fun to play. It's like it's a little bit like playing Ganyu, but a little bit faster. Mm. Um, and a little bit more crowd control. So and yeah, if you give me Ganyu, it's just like bang, done. I'm like, all right, give me something else. <laughs> so damn yeah it's it's fun that you know i i can walk into a stream of yours or a video of yours and then you're doing the it's it's so like really how, fast aim yeah how it works is um sorry how how it works is um you know how you would hold and then you would go into like aim mode right yeah and if you hold long enough it will charge up and then you get a charge shot yeah but if you release too early it's just a regular attack mm -hmm. right just a regular charge shot but now you gotta find like that perfect rhythm where you go in and out because as soon as you go in and let go, you shoot. But as soon as you let go, go back in. Oh. Right? And then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's it's, fun to watch. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's not for everyone. That's for sure. Yeah. I think some people yeah. say like sometimes they get dizzy seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, fair. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a sure. lot of it's um, a lot of motion. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's I always like compare it to like driving a car Um, because if I drive a car. I know where the car is being controlled and where to look, right? Mm -hmm. But if I was a passenger, I have no idea what the driver is going to be doing. And then I don't know where to focus on the road, which makes me sick. Mm -hmm. right? I don't know if anyone else gets that, mm -hmm. but that's kind of how I describe it. Basically, if you were doing it, you'd be fine. But if you yeah. were watching someone do it, yeah, it wouldn't be very fun. Okay. Depends. Yeah. I, th I think that's like mm -hmm. a, a good analogy. I kind of get what you mean mm -hmm. now. I also get car mm -hmm. sick when I'm not driving. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I'm not driving, like I always have to drive. If I have a choice, <laughs> let me be the driver because I need to. Otherwise, I'm going to throw up or fall asleep. Oh, no. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah. Okay. So um, even until now, I know that mm -hmm. people still identify you as an Amber main, right? I mean. Yeah, they they still. I mean, friggin' BTMC, Ed. Yeah. During the uh, one of the tournaments we were in. And Nick Hardy. <laughs> They're like, Rin is the number one Amber main in the world. And I was just like, mm -mm -mm, no, <laughs> don't say that because I'm with the uh, Amber main uh, community, mm -hmm. like a Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's way better guys in there. I just happen to be the most popular one. So mm -hmm. I try to like at least represent the Amber mains as someone very skilled and can do things at the same time. Okay. You, you, you are a good representative of Amber mains. <laughs> we'll we'll say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is nice to be called the Amber main though. Like, yeah, when people hear Amber, they're like, oh, Rin, maybe? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you're that's, that's a nice thing. And people know it like inside and outside of your community. So that's great. I know that you've hosted a few other things as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hoyo has had me or Hoyo's Astro Carnival has had me host their GITCG or Genius Invocation TCG. You got to say that every time. <laughs> you got to say right? the whole thing. <laughs> you got to say the whole thing. I'll get into that. Um, But uh yeah it was um can't remember what it was but there was a thing where uh some creators were added onto this thing and they're like hey who wants to learn how to shout cast and do some trading card game mm. stuff and i didn't really do any of the classes in the game right <laughs> but wait when was uh, this? they asked me like last year january like oh. beginning of the year yeah they were i think i think they were only pulling in like not the top but like mid-sized creators. Okay. And yeah, that was around the time where I had like, you know, a decent CCV, not these days. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and they were like <laughs> offering classes to go with it? Well, I guess they brought people in and they're asking like, does anyone know anyone else? I was like, I don't know, maybe. So I tried to get some people in too. And then, yeah, they kind of gave us, I don't even know if I'm talk, supposed to talk about this, but I'll just be very vague. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just kind of like teach us how to like do things. And then, yeah, they would kind of rotate through us to like host TCG things. And, um, but it ended up being 
six of us that ended up doing most of them because we were the only ones interested in the trading card game. Yeah, and I didn't know I like no knowledge of the trading card game. I was barely interested in it, right? But I thought, hey, this might be fun. Let's try it out. And yeah, the early days with like the Cat's Tail Gathering season one, season two, I was getting clowned on by the G- the TCG guys in their Discord because I didn't know what the hell I was talking really? about. Really? Right. But I enjoyed it a lot. I was learning at the same time until um, I was invited to go host the show in LA with Atsu and Tawano as the shoutcasters for that one, right? Ooh. So I got to watch what was going on and see what the professionals were doing, yeah. like playing the game. And it just was exciting to see like, that's how you play the game like this. Uh- Right. So it got me really interested. So that's when like TCG stuff started popping up in my channels a little bit more as I was learning. There were like even nights where I was like up till three or four a.m. playing TCG just because I just wanted to do it. It was fun. Yeah, it helped me a lot with the hosting after that season three, four and five. I was much better about it Mm -hmm. and people seemed pretty happy. And we even were given like our own event to run on our own. Uh, with like a little bit of budget from them like like hey do you guys want to do this thing oh they, they they gave it to another host uh leah windflower leah yeah and leah came up to me and like hey do you want to help run this thing i was like yeah sure so because they were only going to give us like maybe some art assets and uh just a little bit of a budget yeah and then just to make something out of it right and yeah, i remember the night before the event i spent like 12 hours putting like everything together damn <laughs> Yeah, from head to toe. And they loved it, right? Uh, it looked like just a regular TCG show, but we made it our own. So Yeah, yeah. like you weren't you weren't even just hosting it. You had to like organize the yeah, whole I event was, with Leah. I was basically stage crew and hosting it at the same time. It was, we made it work, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, because if, if they gave it to us and we didn't do any of that, it'd be like, how the hell do we present this and uh-huh. make it look good, right? I don't know anyone else that's going to put that much effort into it. Mm. So I'm like, all right. Here I go. <laughs> then, yeah, 12 hours of work. I loved it. It was fun. Oh my it was gosh. a good time. So. Props I like, to you. This is the stuff I like to do. So I see that you like to do a lot of things that you haven't done before. I mean, like you're so open to saying yes <laughs> to things is what I witnessed from my standpoint. I I was thinking about that the other day. It's like, man, I do a lot of different things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so refreshing. <laughs> it's, I guess it is, right? I know, I don't really stick to one thing, even though... It's just Genshin Impact, right? But Mm -hmm. that's all like maybe like normal people see outside the circle, but no one sees the part where like I'm hosting card tournaments, other like things within game like combat and stuff. Uh, Lore, I'm getting into that now all of a sudden. Yeah. Card game, uh, editing, even now like my current like work of like teaching people how to do things now. So it's just kind of been all over the place. So it's just Genshin by itself. Well, I think you might be the first creator on this podcast that I've that has played TCG the most out of those who I've really guessed it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like TCG <laughs> never really comes up in conversation even because. Right. Yeah. I mean, after the initial like obsession of collecting all the cards or like right. battling all the players, mm-hmm. a lot of it faded out. And I know that. Yeah. TC at least CCG still has like a core community that that really it pays does, attention yes. to it and like even mm. clowned you for it like the first time. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. But <laughs> at least you actually bounced back from that and yeah, were willing to I mean, keep hosting and like going for it because it was fun and you enjoyed it. It's something I've had to learn over the years too that people are just gonna clown on you, and make fun of you for stuff, right? You just kind of roll with the punches. Mm. I am very sensitive, though. I'll let people know right now. If you do that, I might cry, but I'll get over it. So <laughs> uh, that's such a mood. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just part of being a creator. So no one's gonna like. Not everyone will like you. Some people make fun of you. It's just like, what can you do? I can't control it. Let them. Okay, that's okay. That's fair. Don't bother me. But um, yeah, just TCG, like the community is there. It's very strong. And the funny thing is that even though not many people are playing it, when I do bring it up on stream and I like really get into like the details of it, mm-hmm. people stay and watch. They're interested. Oh. Right. So there's definitely some potential behind it still. I think it's up to Hoyoverse themselves to like try to push it more. Mm-hmm. And I think the best thing they can do is make it a separate app not in game yeah i agree that is the one single thing that they can do that can just like increase like the player base the interest in it everything that's all they have to do i think that's all they should do i agree that was honestly like one of my early impressions like when when tcg came out i kind of i was interested in it but then i also thought i don't Mm. really want to load (laughs) the entire genshin game 
on my phone, yeah. like just to play TCG. Right. And back then, yeah, like, like my phone was a bit more <laughs> potato, so I felt like yeah, it was a bit of a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> I love my mini game in a sixty gigabyte other game that I play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and but like I think another way uh, they can just make it more enticing is put Primo Gem rewards in there mm. easily. That's another thing they could do, right? Everything like you have to unlock everything. Why not just give some primo gems at the same time? I don't know why they don't do that. Remember back in th I think it was three point eight. It was like a whole TCG event, mm. right? Yeah. Like it was about it was literally about how TCG was made in game. Yeah. Which the lore, like right? The lore, yeah. Right. And it was like this huge like drama, like yes. sad story of like friend dead, dying wish <laughs> to other friend carry on game. Right. It's just like it was very sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But I remember throughout the whole thing, they would always read out Genius Invocation, TCG. They would never abbreviate it. They would never say TCG on its own, <laughs> so, which kind of like ruined the mood of the whole story at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> right. And even how they like ended it off. Like, why don't we just play some Genius Invocation, TCG? <laughs> and then the quest ends. I'm just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's like yeah. the world's longest so, ad for Genius Invocation yeah. TCG. And whenever I had to read out anything that it said, yeah, had to say out the whole thing, Genius Invocation <laughs> TCG. <laughs> uh, wow. So. All right. So yeah. uh, you should you should just like record that as a sound bite. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. I should. Put in, it like, on three your different moves. Genius Invocation TCG. Yeah. <laughs> And Genius Invocation TCG. Like, both of those would be great. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. You know. If you're watching this right now, go register to the Cat's Tail Gathering. I think there's a sign-up right now. You could win money. Ooh. Like, the winner gets a 1000 bucks. Ooh. One and the fourth, I'll get cash. And you get, like, a cool card back. Uh, if you do really well, you can go on, like, a paid trip. Oh. Uh, just it's fun. Like it, there's opportunities there, and you just gotta learn how to play the card game. Okay. And yeah, just try it out. So and shout out so. to the to the TCG community because yeah, yeah, you, you guys are the real ones. <laughs> They're definitely the real ones. They want to be noticed. I'm trying to help them. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. helping them because yeah, I get yeah. I get that too. Like, um, the visibility isn't that great because as as we've seen, like it doesn't show up in a lot of like the popular creators like mm, arsenal yeah. or repertoire of content and stuff so visibility yeah. for that would be great anyway um <laughs> <laughs> no but moving on to like other forms of genshin content because mm. like you've been a content creator for a long time um I, yeah yeah and also a genshin <laughs> content creator what were you doing before genshin i i can go through the whole timeline but before genshin it was um love live content I don't know if you know what that is. I have like a very vague idea of what it is because I okay. see it on your Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a Japanese anime idol uh, thing. Music, uh, videos, anime, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I was doing that for probably... When did Genshin come out? 2020? Yeah. I think, right? Yeah. So about four years I was doing that. I was only like... When I first got into it, I had maybe like... 5,000 subscribers. Okay. Then Love Live really blew up my channel at the time, what blowing up would constitute, right? Mm -hmm. I probably made like 60,000 subscribers with that community or something Ooh. like that. But I can confidently say I was like the top creator in that space for Love Live, Damn. English speaking at least. Yeah. Uh, but before that was like makeup and cosplay and just kind of like anything that i was like interested in at the time i would just make a video about so okay yeah, i've been doing content for on youtube at least maybe this would probably be like my 10th year 10th year yeah i've been at this for a long time <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my goodness okay yeah i've been i've been around for a while <laughs> yeah and and yeah. <laughs> especially with genshin from the start i mean i think you you've been around from the start right yeah, yeah. I only I started about a week late, but I did. I was at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And even yeah. from that point, like Amber was a starting point. Yep. Amber was like one of the beginning points. I didn't like. I don't know. I just played Genshin on a whim. Everyone else is playing, and I was like, "All right, let's go check what this game is out." And I was like, "Whoa, this game's actually really cool." Yeah. So. Your videos have been like boss rush challenges, spiral abyss challenges, like a lot, a lot of challenges. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of Amber can do this thing that other characters can do quite easily, but can you do it? Kind of framed how it is, you know? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people do variety content, right? Like a lot of the yeah. top creators, it's a lot of variety, whether it's like abyss challenges or like main challenges or like this, mm. this, that. Um, but I don't know. Yours are always seem like really intense. <laughs> like yeah, maybe because they're... you're using Amber. But... <laughs> yeah, they're a, lot, a little bit harder than what I guess most people need them to be, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, so the Amber content took off on the channel. And then I think I started picking up Spiral Abyss. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh, I could just try like, you know, these challenges like random character wheel mm -hmm. or mono element team same weapon team stuff like that like some kind of weird theme that i had to follow and make and then run through the abyss with it yeah and then maybe outside of that i'd take character and then like all right let's rush every boss in the overworld mm. without dying ah uh, yeah like yeah that. yeah yeah were there or, uh, challenges that you failed or that you felt disappointed challenges that i failed yeah i don't think i failed anything yet, <laughs> but i can tell you that when Raiden Shogun first came out, the fight. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I was in there, I wanted to do a clear where I didn't get hit. Mm -hmm. Right. The first time. And that was a 12 hour stream. Mm. <laughs> and chat was telling me, Rin, go to bed. Stop trying. Oh my goodness. It was intense. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't, couldn't get it that night, but I got it the next night. It was just like amazing. Right. But yeah. then. With the amber mains, you know, they're always thinking and figuring things out. Like, we found a way where you can do it without taking any damage because the the ball thing that you have to hit yeah. and break open to protect yourself from the final calamity yeah. will give you one HP hit. Yeah. Regardless of like whatever, right? Uh -huh. But there's a way where you can avoid that. And it's how you try to get your burst energy back up, even though it gets sapped away from you during that time. Oh. So with amber, what you would have to do is when the shogun teleports back to the middle, you throw your Baron Bunnies out there, and you have to have two of them at the time. So your Amber had to be That's at least a constellation, C4. yeah. Yes, right? So, And then you create an overload between the Baron Bunny and the Shogun, but the sh Bunnies have to hit the Shogun still, right? So the energy comes back to you. So as the energy gets sapped away from you, you get that set up, overload the Shogun and the Bunnies. You just have to hit the Shogun, too, because it'll cause an explosion near everything, right? Yeah. So they'll take the, all the damage. And the energy comes back to you. Your burst fills, and then you have to time it just as it's coming down. So you iframe the whole attack. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. And then at the time, right, the equipment wasn't that good, right? So I would have to go through that cycle twice because I couldn't take her down that fast. Oh. Right. So that was about a seven, eight minute fight from start to finish. And then you had to avoid the jump rope phase. Yeah. And then you have the hope that she doesn't do like this one move that sends a shadow at you from the ground because yeah. you can't outrun it. That was tough. Oh, my God. Very, very tough. Now, I can clear that in less than three minutes without dying. Uh -huh. I said the heck with that um, that challenge. Because, like, I still think it's okay to just one HP loss that. Because whatever. Because you can still break the orb by shooting at it with Amber four times. But it's very, like, precision. <laughs> like, it's really close. Right? So I did that. I can beat her in three minutes from that now with only that one hit there. And then there was a video where it was like, why don't I let the Shogun try to hit me now for a full, like, start the finish of her rotation? And then after that, I fight her without getting hit. And I did it. Ooh. So <laughs> that was a very fun video. Very tough, but it was okay. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, okay. Yeah, I, I fought Shogun a lot with a lot of different characters. So I know her attack patterns, like, in and out. That's so specific. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, props to the Amber Mains also for her figuring yeah, that out and learning yeah it's useless information no one needs to know or do because you can just bring c6 r5 hu tao and just like Bleh. you're done right yeah why would you do this there's no point to doing this i don't recommend it to anyone but yeah i feel like walking like learning all the amber main stuff is an entirely different encyclopedia of genshin knowledge hmm yeah, it's well, it can apply to like all the other archers too. like Goro, for instance. Actually, he's the only archer that can do that really fast in canceling that you've probably seen before. Uh huh. Yeah, there's like this because of his character model and how he sheathes the bow in and out. Mm. You can fire off a string of arrows really fast. Damn. And if you're really good, you'll be able to maneuver around and do it at the same time. So technically, Goro is the best character for this kind of thing. Maybe Venti, too, I think, because they start the same, they have the same, same character pose. model. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Venti is actually the true one because Venti has a constellation that increases physical damage uh -huh. or like shred or something like that. Yeah, which seems kind of weird, right? Because you would think like just use him to swirl enemies together, but no. Yeah. Like, he can he can destroy things really fast if you build him as a physical. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Aside from like the challenges, you also do the challenges with people. Like you've brought on uh, streamers and VAs to boss rush oh, with you, yeah. and then you also right. had like the co-op spiral abyss challenge with Brax very recently. Um, <laughs> so. What happened was, do you okay? So Gratis Status, creator from like back in the time, mm. he's just probably doing school right now or just keeping busy. I'm not sure what he's doing. It's been a while. He pops up every uh, now and then. <laughs> yeah, but his, his channel was like blown up at the time because he really understood like what to do and how to like get out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so one video, I remember he DM'd me on Discord because we were all in the Genshin Impact channel of Discord or something like that, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to do a Amber tournament with us?" Is like. Oh, sure. Okay. I'm down, right? So it was me, Brax the phone. I can't say this guy's name. I can say it if it was not backwards, but it's just Tosica, but it's like Tosica backwards or something. Akashat. Yeah, that's what it is, right? Okay. Yeah, another creator. Yeah, and then uh, Gratis himself. I think Gratis was participating. I think he was. He got us together in a call. He's like, all right, we're going to do an Ember competition, and whoever wins gets $1,000. He didn't tell us that. And we're like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> oh, my like, goodness. Yeah. It was like, okay, cool, right? Um, Braxophone ended up winning that one, right? Really? Uh, yeah, but we hung out and talked after that too, right? We're just like, yo, what's you want to hang out somewhere and just do things? Mm. And then uh, a video idea of en ended up popping up was like, why don't we do like a co-op video where we run around with our favorite characters and just try to fight everything, mm. right? So his was Yoimi Me at the time, mine was Amber, and everyone found that really fun because it was like a podcast and a showcase at the same time for two characters so yeah. there's like two things going on so we would talk about something and then we'd fight something mm -hmm. and then yeah i just kind of went from there with ideas i think my next guest with christian bannis because i heard he was an amber main so i was like okay oh. a va in the game that would be fun to like hang out and talk with and do stuff yeah. so that was really cool too i guess at the time my streaming started picking up too because everyone's streaming was picking up with genshin at the time mm -hmm. uh and then other videos in youtube that's when i saw Ying's Liwe pronunciation guide on YouTube. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this person seems cool. I'll pop by their stream sometime. So I sent a raid there when I saw them. Mm -hmm. And they was like, oh, hi. And we're just like, you know, what streamers do in chat, just kind of awkwardly just yeah, I know, right? talk for a little bit before they leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but I think they were playing Doki Doki literature at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I knew what that was. I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to watch the reaction because it seemed like they were new to it. Mm -hmm. um, but Yang style of I don't want, I just want to preface it. I don't like gossiping about my friends. I want to just keep this as what happened in the public. That's the only thing I can talk okay. about. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was talking to Ying through the chat and just like doing whatever. And I think one time I made this weird joke. And then when I thought about it back, it's like, oh, that's kind of weird. I probably shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went out to them. I was like, yo, I'm sorry about if I said something like this. I'm like, no, that's totally cool, right? Like, I get it. It's like, whatever. It's like, oh, okay, cool. So we started, followed each other on Twitter and then we started talking a lot after that. And then eventually Ying and I did that uh, Boss Rush collab that we did together. But that was like probably the first uh, real one where Ying didn't stick to the script, I uh -huh. guess you could say. Because you're supposed to use a character that you main, right? Ying just used everyone on their roster. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Right. So we're just like, all right, we'll just do that. So I just kind of like ran around and did stuff and we just talked about all kinds of things. And I think that one particular video, a lot of people really liked okay. for some reason. I think it's because of this gender conversation we had in there. Oh. And a lot of people would like highlight it in the comments like, yo, this one really helped me. Even like one commenter came back like two years or a year or however old that video is after the fact just to tell like, hey, by the way, so here's my transitioning story that's updating right now. It's wow. like, holy crap, cool. Yeah, so that was really cool to hear about just from like people that that video, I guess, really uh, touched a lot of people in a really good way. How how um, long ago did you publish that video? I think it was in November of 2021, I think, Ooh. or 2020. Was very early on for sure. Wow. But yeah, after that, so it was just like, all right, I'll just do these uh, collabs with friends and their mains actually i think there's someone before ying there's a friend of mine then it was ying then it was ruby mm -hmm. uh and then just all kinds of people down the list i've had Corey Yi who voices goro yeah um i know you've had um cole's va christina 
Christina, yeah, Christina, we're great friends now because of that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we talk a lot. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, just doing that, like uh, being connected to the voice actors because they would stream Genshin on their own channels, yes. right? So we could go find them and say hi. Yeah. And I made a lot of friends with them just that way, just hanging out and chatting. So some of them were guests. Some of them I met in real life and just hung out with. Some of them are friends right now. And uh, yeah, just these growing this network that just keeps like growing and growing and growing and just like meeting people just from Genshin alone. Yeah. You meet all kinds of different people from all kinds of walks of life. It's in like just mind blowing to just see how much Genshin has just changed everything for me. So Yeah. Yeah. And like you you mentioned your if ever growing network. And honestly, that is like one of the things that stuck to me most about you mm. when when I first like when we when I first joined a Discord server that had you in it, uh-huh. because like thus far, this is like the probably the first proper one on one conversation you and I have had. Yeah, right? no, it is for sure. Right, <laughs> yeah. but like we've kind of been yeah. revolving around each other's friend circles. Like we, yeah. we collab, we join other people's collabs together, and like or mm. we've been mutuals on like every platform for like a while yeah 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 for right? sure we've, we've just known each other we know of each other yeah. and we kind of like see each other in passing and we're like hey how's it going and then you know just go about our day exactly so. and yeah one of the yeah that was one of the first things where i'm like holy crap rin tai cho knows a lot of people <laughs> it's like which is <laughs> i don't know how to put it but I know a lot of people, but I'm still kind of like just doing my own thing. I'm pretty low key about it. Yeah. But everyone just kind of knows who I am. I mean, right? I think that's like that's a, that's like a nice balance to have. Like you don't really want to be the person who like starts name dropping everyone just just to right, right. right? But then because it's be- because you've actually made like genuine friendships yeah, yeah. or relationships with them through your collabing together, yeah. streaming together, and like meeting each other, mm-hmm. and it's come to a it's from well from my point of view when i see like you interacting with other people it's like it's like those friendships where you don't have to always keep in touch but yes you know that's, each that's other. the kind of thing is that's the stuff that's very important to me because i'm very busy yes. I'm always doing something i'm always on the run right so uh i am kind of like hesitant about making new friends a lot of the time <laughs> yeah. so that's why i'm not like as out there as some other creators right because they like have massive friends with them they interact all the time mm-hmm. right um, I'm hesitant to include more people in the sphere, kind of just like keep them at arm's length, talk if we can, and just, you know, say hi or whatever, right? But I usually don't do the approaching. People approach me. Mm-hmm. Very rarely will I approach someone mm-hmm. like Brax and Ying and some of the voice actors. And um, yeah, like people that I know that I would probably want to like get to know better, I'll probably do that too. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I just kind of keep to myself as much as I can. You know, it's it's surprising for me to hear you say that you do keep to yourself as much as you can, because <laughs> like Which all is... things considered. <laughs> but like all things, especially this week, where it's just like Rin, you want to play Lethal this Company? game? It's like sure. <laughs> then it's just like this group. And then the next day, this group. And the next day, this group. All t- totally different people. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is like, oh my god. <laughs> Actually, um, Mina Oyama. Uh huh. One of the gr- people in the group, I we were just talking the other, I think today actually, uh, we were just talking about like things we did in the past and stuff like that. And then the conversation came up where Mina's like, Rin, I used to watch your content when I was in university. I was like, Whoa. You're not the first person I heard to say that <laughs> because there's a lot of VTubers that tell me that kind of thing. Um, there's a VTuber I met at Offkai Expo. Uh-huh. They they even had like that iPad that and they were on like that uh electronic stroller that kind of like they drive around like with the like segue? a handler at the same time yeah the little segue and they have like that ipad where it's just like them uh-huh. right? so they can see right because <laughs> i youtubers can't reveal who they are obviously yeah so i remember walking by one and they started like i was in a group and they started yelling at us and we went to go say hi mm-hmm. right and they're asking us what we were doing so i started showing them like our like what we got right and these cards and at off kai if you were a guest there you would get like this card of your vtuber on it right uh-huh. so i had my own I showed it to them and then they just froze for a second. And then they like, are you this person? I was like, yes. And then they just started freaking out for some reason. They were so nervous about it because I guess they also watched me as they were growing up as a kid. Right. And that's not the first time that's happened. There's been so many, especially VTubers, because that's kind of like the easiest. Well, not easiest, but like something that people are doing these days to get out there. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. A lot of VTubers watched me growing up through their elementary school days doing content and things like that. Even some of the voice actors, Kaylee Mills. I don't know how to say your last name. Kaylee Mills? Mills? Mi- yeah. Voice actor for Kuching. Yeah. English, right? I remember I followed them on uh, Twitter one day because they're the voice actor Kuching. I was going around like following voice actors because I like their work. It's like, oh, cool. I want to see what they're doing. Of course. And Kaylee followed me back. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> right? Then they tweeted me. I was like, Rin, I used to watch your stuff when I was in high school. I was like, what the frig? you kidding me oh my goodness right? and then that happened again with uh kimberly the voice actor for nahida yeah <laughs> yeah that person too and i was just like what is going on but to be told something like that and all these people that have like found their own way as a creator their own identity and doing their own thing it just kind of makes me happy to see that they're doing good yeah and i was at least some way part of their upbringing i guess yeah. you can say Right. At least like if you're going to watch a YouTuber, you, they're going to leave an impression on you, I would say. Right. Yes. So I'm glad I left a good one. <laughs> so it was nice. It's nice to hear. That explains a lot. I know quite a few people, but not because like I'm trying to go out there. Just people just come up to me and just tell me about stuff. I'm like, oh, OK, cool. Yeah, so, it, it, because yeah. because you've been like a, a content creator in that space and been around for a long time. Like a lot of people don't even know like how old I am or anything because just appearance wise they assume like whatever right and i'm like doing these and making these very gen z meme humor culture yeah. kind of references because i have to right because it's part of like mm-hmm. <laughs> the community and stuff like that but no i'm well older than probably most of the genshin creators i would say i've stopped trying to guess people's ages like <laughs> cre- that's, creators that's ages okay. like a long time yeah most most of them are like around the 20s right now mm-hmm. probably toward the later end of the 20s at this point mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm entering my mid 30s right now. Oh. I turned 37 in May, which is probably like another reason why I try to keep my distance from people because I'm just like well older than most people. So <laughs> I don't really want to be hanging out with young people all the time because that's kind of weird, mm-hmm. you know? So, but like things like this where you can just like chat. It's like, yeah, cool. I can do that. So I only know if your most recent VTuber iteration mm. like your most recent vtuber form that's shown up in like more re- like recent genshin videos and stuff yeah. but did you have like a previous vtuber identity no so it's been this vtuber yeah it's just been like this vtuber maybe like older versions of the same character oh. through like whatever means i've been able to do but yeah it's just i never made like a debut i maybe made like a name for my vtuber and like an account and that but it's still just like me mm-hmm. so okay yeah it's just I only wanted one just so I wouldn't have to turn the camera on. That's it. (laughs) But have something on screen so it's like interactable, right? And then, yeah, so I just, I was just using a free app for a while and then just like their customization, right? Yeah. But then I remember two fans emailed me saying, hey, can we make you a VTuber model? So like for practice or something like, sure, okay. So I didn't hear from them for like months and months after that. So I figured like, okay, maybe they didn't do it. But then they emailed me and they had all these, they had the whole thing rigged and everything ready to go. It was like, yo, what? So cool. <laughs> right? Yeah. And they said I could have it for free. And I said, no, <laughs> I'm going to pay you. Don't worry about it. Right? I'll pay you right now. <laughs> so wow. I, g- I gave them their cash. Right. Mm-hmm. They asked me too, like, how, how do you want your VTuber to look if you do it? It's like, so I gave them like some references. It was like, uh, just as one of these outfits that I used to wear like a lot for streaming on whatever right so this kind of like this persona give that to them and they made an amazing job with it yeah. and then we've updated it so it looks a little bit better more smoother and things like that and they're updating it again actually with some other things really so. yeah so i use it off and on whenever i'm like uh, i get home late from work and i just don't feel like being on camera or i'm tired or something on my face looks weird and i don't <laughs> want to like remove it or whatever right? so. <laughs> that's when the vtuber comes out if it's gonna be a long stream i'll bring out the vtuber too as well ah uh, so. okay yeah, yeah. I, I totally get that. Like, just not wanting to turn on the camera. Yeah, just not wanting to turn the camera on. But you want to be on, just like, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And coming home from work and and being tired and stuff, I'm I'm amazed you're still able to like a full time job, <laughs> and then a streaming content creator career job, despite how <laughs> much you do in the streamer content creator career job you know yeah it's not more like i can handle it because definitely it's tough Mm -hmm. like 100 percent um it's more like i have to do it okay in order to keep this lifestyle Ah. uh but yeah i still do have a full-time job 
uh like 40 hours a week mm -hmm. and then yeah usually when i come home i just work on this for however long but i don't really look at streaming and content creating as a job at all really it's just something i just enjoy doing okay i definitely work too hard at it and can burn myself out like regular people do but i've made decisions before like and thoughts about like maybe it's time to quit maybe i should stop being a creator and start being like an, an agent for people instead because i have all these connections so i know what i could do i can help someone yeah uh but i end up circling back to just like i just want to make stuff and just do streams and things so that's what keeps me here keeps me going mm -hmm. and as things go like sometimes i had my biggest like uh decline plateau whatever you want to call it for a while yeah. until recently yeah uh so that was pretty tough for a while because i was kind of getting used to like the revenue at the time but then a lot of it has disappeared and i did want to try to go full-time yeah. at that point but i was very like maybe i should wait a bit to see and make sure like i can do this mm -hmm. thankfully i didn't go full-time because that's when the decline happened so i kept my full-time job which by the way i've had my full-time job for about it's going to be 19 years now in july wow <laughs> yeah uh yeah i've worked ever since i got out of high school and then yeah i picked up streaming along the way like maybe seven or eight years ago after i started youtube for 10 now my life has to have this mm -hmm. and then my real-time job just to be able to afford living like this currently mm -hmm. yeah so it's not like i wouldn't say i'm used to it because it's definitely tough like so there's some days where i just will lay down and not do anything <laughs> because i'm just so tired yeah right and then I feel bad because then I neglect work and whatever. Then, then I end up staying like l up late to like 4 a.m. Mm. editing something because I can't afford my editors right now because I don't want to pay cut them because I the channel's just not making money. So I just start taking the work back to myself. Okay. But yeah, with that comes, you know, staying up late and working on something way too long or whatever. So it, it's it's been rough for a while, but things are starting to pick up again. But again, I'm being cautious about it. Like, because I would love to just do this full time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But I just can't right now. It's it's really hard. Can I so. ask what your uh field of work is? Um, I work in building construction, but not building construction. I work in like an office. Okay. I'm like an admin. I do scheduling, organizing, oh. like logging, things like that. Just like anything to do with the computer and like all that stuff, that's what I do for them and they go about their day. Okay. Regarding that plateau you mentioned i know i've mm. I've been seeing that like that was a big source of frustration for you because you sat was, like yeah. below the 200k <laughs> subscriber mark for a while <laughs> yeah and you know like watching like i'll just say it like you and brax and angela and min and everyone like go past me at that point it was really soul crushing yeah. for me right because i wanted to keep up too but i just couldn't figure out what to do Right. Like happy that you guys grow for sure. Right. But for me, it's just like, what am I doing wrong? What do I do to like get out of this? So it was it was a pretty rough time because I was really doubting myself. I wasn't sure if it was me, if it was just how YouTube algorithm worked, if it was just Genshin on a decline. It probably a combination of everything mm -hmm. going on. Right. But yeah, I just couldn't figure it out. So that's when I was thinking, like, maybe I should just quit because this is frustrating. Yeah. Well, one, how did you Mm. deal with that like through through your breaks you said you were like processing like reevaluating stuff what was the result of that i mean obviously you're you're still creating content now so yeah something must have told you to just keep going or keep trying yeah it's just like i always find myself back in my computer after i'm doing whatever and i'm like i have an idea i want to make something so i go and make it mm -hmm. if it works cool if it doesn't well okay i'll try something else mm. So, but my brain seems to keep wanting to make things. And so I'm just like fulfilling that kind of need. And as long as I do it, then I'm like, all right, I'm happy that I made this thing. Now I can move on to the next because I don't like leaving work unfinished. It really bothers me <laughs> when I like so many things that are just not done. Okay. And yeah. now you've, you've broken out of it. I mean, you've broken past your 200 
5K. You're at 10.1K Yeah, I finally K did. <laughs> Thank, like, that was a surprise. I was like, holy crap, that's what I had to do? Uh-huh. Because I was always thinking about it. Like, I guess, I guess I'm in the guide creator community yeah. now. <laughs> it was something I've wanted to avoid for a long time because there's so many people in it. Like, what am I going to contribute to this? Like, I don't really want to, like, oversaturate even more. But you have uh, something but... to contribute to it. <laughs> I had something to contribute, apparently, right? It's like, I was talking to Brax about this, too, when we were hanging out just before the LA concert. Yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about, like, what I could do. So I was just, like, going over ideas that I came up with. Uh, one of them was, like, all right, since someone like Brax and you have, like, guides on how to build characters and, like, best artifacts and all the math and things behind that. But there weren't a lot of people necessarily about, like, how to execute things. Yes. Like the kind of technical, the like what buttons do you press part of it, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I know this because I've literally fought everything in Genshin with Amber. I know exactly how every monster works. Yeah. And it was proven because the one short that popped off was a short about something about a tip for each hide or each hypostasis box, yes. right? Or some weird fact about it. And a lot of people had no idea that the electro hypostasis had a cage, for instance, right? Uh -huh. It has this cage move or they didn't know um, the hydro hypostasis had two entrances. Oh, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just these little weird things that people were like, what? Really? Uh -huh. And then that thing kind of just like went off. Obviously, it also went off from people that were kind of like rude. I'm sure you've experienced this. <laughs> uh, people will always think you're better than you. Uh -huh. Right. And they'll share their opinion, but they always frame it very snobbishly. Yes. Right. They could just state a fact without being a jerk yeah right you just say the thing but not like kind of flex on everyone at the same time which also people would do at the same time they would also flex in the chat because one of the other ones that popped off was like i think it was a short about how to farm the fontaine talent domain right yes and my my approach is only using the free characters yeah the ones that you get for free only so if you can build them obviously you gotta build them another way right so you're still gonna suffer for a while mm -hmm. just to farm faster Right. So people would come in and they're like, oh, I just do this with Hu Tao and I swing and ha ha. Why do you do this? Or um, I use X, X, Y and X, like like some limited five star in there. I remember this one comment is like, oh, for the hydro hypostasis, if you just use Nahida and just swing around the slimes, they all die. I'm like, all right, how are they going to get Nahida then? Yeah, like cup think. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> like, why are you saying this? Yeah. Purposely make something, but you don't tell them everything about it because people will tell you, thus creating engagement. Yeah. And then you just have them just like shoulder all the weird flexy people for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I, that's another thing I taught myself. Never, ever respond to negativity or anything like that. Yeah. Like I go out of my way to look for like the good comments and people leaving nice things or people leaving like legitimate questions like mm -hmm. why this or whatever. Right. I'll do that. But if people are like being a jerk or whatever, mm -hmm. just don't. Yeah. Just it's do not engage. Just it's user. just made my life <laughs> way better. Just like way, way better. They can have their cake and just be whatever in their comment. But I just don't acknowledge it. I just move on. Yeah, so. that, that's a that's a good move. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> especially with, with guides. Definitely. Yeah, with like everyone thinks they know everything, right? <laughs> but like now I'm purposely not sharing everything so people will add on to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's, that's the thing I talked to Brax about because I remember early on Brax would just use his account for like examples on how to build teams and stuff. So people were clowning on him because like not everyone has like five star this or C6 that or whatever. And then he understood that. So he started like, you know, breaking it down to like C0 and then explaining like, if you got this, then this and this and this. Like he went very thorough with his option. Same with you. Yeah. You would do the same thing. You would break down like constellation, what's worth it, what's what you shouldn't get. Mm -hmm. I come in and like, okay, how about you just use the free characters and the stuff that people clowned on Brax for, they came back and clowned on me because they could just brag about their five stars and four stars, right? <laughs> They're like, why don't you just do like use my hotel or like, why do you need these tips? You shouldn't even play this game. You should uninstall. I had oh a comment. Oh my God. Like yeah. So it's like, there's new players that come in against yeah. every day and they would love these kind of things. People have told me that. Yeah. So it's like, that's great. I want to help these people. It sounds fun because I kind of like, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting older and getting more tired. I don't have that energy <laughs> to like run around and spend 12 hours like soloing a boss with Amber anymore. Uh -huh. right? But I like the idea where I can pass that knowledge on to people now. That's kind of what attracted me to doing this more. Yeah. I, have, I can teach a lot of people how to play the game better. So that's like, all right, you don't need this, mm. but you can totally do it with these. Mm. So you don't have to build these. Like I try to frame it like that. You could build these characters, but if you have better character, you can slot in 
do it mm -hmm. go ahead yeah right that's you, you can totally do that but that's that's also yeah. like what i encounter <sighs> with my four star mm. spiral abyss runs because yeah. oh do they do that to you too yeah 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 <laughs> i get comments i get comments like no one builds these characters. You should do it with five stars. And I'm like, <laughs> just the point. <laughs> the point is that you can do it with these characters, and you should yeah, do it with you... five stars if you have them. <laughs> oh my god! It's just like we can't keep anyone happy. It's like you say we can't use five stars, but then you yell at us for not using the five stars. Yeah. It's like, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Um, anyway. But I will say that I really like your guide content, and I do mm. also wish, like Loki or Haiki wish, that you started doing them earlier because it is valuable information. Like yeah. like being able to fight bosses and boss patterns, like to a, skill, a noob. And like Genshin attracts a lot of new players, not just new yeah. players but like players who are new to gaming period like not everyone has like pattern recognition not everyone like watches mm. out for those things you know so i do think that it is valuable content I, like uh, for on my end the closest that i get to it is when it comes to spiral abyss because it's in the context of spiral abyss but i've right. never like thought about doing that for overworld or like just making a video like how to beat hypostasis and things like that and i'm sure that yeah. there are videos out there but it's always yeah. nice to have like it solidified and itemized tips with a good voiceover you know with like good quality and things like yes. that so i mean the more thank you for the voiceover one right oh yeah yeah of course <laughs> yeah of course i mean i do see like um I have watched instructional videos, like various videos mm. on how to beat this. And then it comes with text boxes. And those are good, you know, for people who like to pause and read, for example. Right. But then like just more people doing it or innovating it or like doing their own take on it, version of it. Like it's always welcome, in my opinion. You know, that's the other thing. While I was in the decline and trying to figure out like what to do, like I would watch YouTube videos like what are people doing now? Mm. How do you approach this and things like that? I know that shorts are kicking ass right now. Yeah on the thing and like for me too when it comes to guides i would prefer something that gets straight right to the point yes. like right away and then preferably very fast so shorts were a great way to like get that information out there i think that's the challenge for me so like try to put like all that technical knowledge into a minute yeah. <laughs> right that's the hardest part and then yeah hoping the team that i do build can like clear the domain in like a reasonable amount of time i know who tao can clear the Mondstadt talent domain in like 20 <laughs> seconds. I know not everyone has a dang Hu Tao. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? So I, I think it's fun. It's it challenges me too, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have to go figure out like, oh, okay, just use free characters to go do a thing now. Yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been great. I think the next thing I want to do is like kind of focus on the banner characters. Mm -hmm. Then I would like you should pull this character because they can fit these situations mm. right yeah then i can like bring back past like strategies like instead of amber now you can use bennett in talent domain because bennett's coming back. yeah an amazing banner coming up right now yeah yeah, way, yeah. So. we do yeah it's one of the most best banners i've ever seen a lot of guide makers like that's a, that's a philosophy that like a lot of guide makers yeah. do it's like we have to focus on like what's out now like the character the banner yeah, characters yeah. uh because people are pulling so people are searching these um yeah. and it is nice that for things like talent domains and open world bosses, because I yep. it, I always have to remind myself that, yeah, okay, I can do Spiral Abyss, guys, but how many people, how many players, or what percent of the player population actually does Spiral Abyss, right? Way more people yeah, exactly. are farming in the overworld and trying to yeah, people beat are, things and spend their resin. Yeah, they're just, they're casual. They're playing with friends and co-op and things like that, right? Your point about like short, the short form, like getting straight yeah. to the point. I do appreciate yeah. short forms for obviously how short mm. they are. Um, yeah, like just to have that variety of content available for people, like if they want to sit down and really get into the numbers and things, your content would be really good for that kind of stuff. People that like would love to hear like an essay essentially on why you should build this character mm -hmm. and then all the information laid out for you. Some people love that. Yeah. Like for me, I like that stuff. And then I can have a meal at the same time <laughs> while I listen, right? Or work on something else. Yeah. Right? Nice, nice noise in the background. But when it comes to me and I think to myself, like, all right, what do I like? Mm -hmm. Because I know there's other people out there that like it, too. Mm -hmm. I'm impatient. Mm -hmm. So I want something fast. So sure would be great for this kind of thing. Yeah. So that's kind of how that idea came into play. It <laughs> is exactly. And it's working out like yeah. it is something that you can demo really fast and like really snappy. I'm 
interested to see your like arc <laughs> like this content arc yeah it's it's been yeah i've i like to think of it like a soldier who has now returned home to teach other soldiers <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> Like, looking at your past content, you have had all that knowledge stored up in there. Yeah, I have been on the battlefield for a very long time. I have many stories to share with the young cadets these days. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. very excited to see <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last Genshin, particularly Genshin-related thing that I wanted to touch on before we move on to, mm. like, more personal stuff is your cosplaying. Ah. because i like how it's cosplay because it could be its own thing but yeah. it's still genshin so <laughs> well your very popular cosplays have been genshin cosplays yes yes they have yes. yeah like i've never cosplayed mm. and i have friends who cosplay um mm. and i kind of know what goes on there but you're also yeah. i think you're the first guest who's come on who has cosplayed a lot brax has cosplayed yes but definitely not as often yes, as yes. you <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah, let me let tell me like I guess like the creative juices that come with it because like people have their own takes on cosplays. People have their own some some people like get the the cosplay um from stores or from shops and then some make it themselves and then some do kind of half and half where they innovate these things and then you still have to adjust it to fit your body and things like that. I just like to dress up. That's kind of it, right? So I've always I've been like this since I was a kid. Um, I just like to dress up as different characters and just be different people. Um, and then it's more fun when you're doing it with a media that you're really into. And Genshin just happens to be that thing right now. Uh, and then back in my day with cosplay, it was harder to get. And quality for cosplay back then was way cheaper, Ooh. not the best kind of thing. I've had like really bad shops before, before with costumes I bought. But now these days, um, it's way more accessible. It's faster, which can be a problem because lots of waste and materials being just like made and then just thrown out. Right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the effort that people put into cosplay, like just from just all the guides and things and tutorials that are out there now. Um, I don't mind if either people make their own or buy their own, because for me personally, I just want to dress up as a character. Yeah. And take a picture and be like cool i did that and then kind of just move on to the next one mm -hmm. right but i also kind of like like i'm into like acting and stuff like that too at the same time right so i would think it'd be fun like especially for a stream mm -hmm. you just show up as a character and then you just have fun with your chat with whatever you're gonna do so yeah i think that's just like a fun of little appeal okay i'm basically gonna have every genshin character at some point in this house wow I have a lot already. Like, if you name a character, I might have it, maybe, but I don't know. Try try one right now. Name a character. Eula. You have Eula. Yes. I do have Eula, yes. Ganyu. Yes. You do? Yeah. I do. There's a picture on Instagram, I think. I'm pretty sure. Child. <sighs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> but, 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 chat wants me to do that. I tell them, no, only for a certain sub goal, I'll do it. And they never hit it. They always come up short. Like, mm mm, -mm. That's, so, that's so funny. Like, out of out of the ones yeah. I could think of. Okay, child. No, th that's the funny thing. Because he's the one I mock the most uh -huh. in probably anything I do. So it would just be really funny if I finally go and do that. Mm. Because I would be playing into it so hard. I also generally don't cosplay guys very often. But I started doing that more mm. now. Yeah, bit. with your all hate them cosplay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll hate them constantly now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a story. Uh -huh. I don't, I've told this story many times, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I was at the con. Uh, I was with a friend, with a group, right? But it was with a friend too. Uh, she really likes I'll hate them, mm -hmm. right? So I thought, all right, I'm going to play a funny trick on them. Not trick, but so they're, we're just talking in a group. We're hanging out. And I walk up to my friend like, yo, what is that thing over there, right? But so they go to turn around and look, right? But my hand was like pretty close to their face. So as they went to look that way, I brought my hand back like this, <laughs> and like, you know, hand and chin, chin and hand kind of thing. And they <laughs> just blew up. <laughs> they ran away really shy. It was really funny. <laughs> That's so cute. So. That's so cute. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So I, it's just these little things that I like to do. It's just, you know, fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And I get to be a different person. So I really like. No, no, no. <laughs> I was just gonna say I really like when you and Ying cosplay together. Oh yeah, we we cos. Oh my god, You're a there's pair. a show behind it too. 
we did a Beiguang stream, mm -hmm. and the idea behind it was it was like a subathon at the same time. I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Ying and I both had like a subathon going on at the same time, like not like in a day, but like over a month. Like hit these goals, we would do X thing. So we were talking about it together. We're like, hey. How about we do a goal where we would show up and hang out with each other and do like a cosplay photo shoot? So we had that one pretty high because that would cover like plane costs and a bunch of other things, right? Yeah. So we ran this we ran this uh, special stream where people would submit lines to us for us to read out and just be cringe, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever chat wanted us to do. Within reason, right? Mm -hmm. Like don't do everything. Mm -hmm. Most things, right? Mm -hmm. So we did that. We didn't make our goals, but after we talked about it, we're like, you want to just do this anyway? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, let's do this. So I spent a weekend with them where they live. I met a bunch of their friends, uh, did a bunch of things. We saw One Piece Red when I was down there, too. Oh. We were trying to figure out what to do for there because we're like, we can't do Big Wong again. So what do we do? Hmm. We remembered that we also had the <laughs> a the Ride in A and the Yaimiko cosplays, which I think is probably one of our other popular ones together. Yeah. Uh, and then we did the same stream, but in person then. Ah. There. So it became much more cringe. Mm. <laughs> but much yes. more fun. Much more fun, yeah. It was probably one of the more happiest uh, moments I've had with this whole Genshin career, just to do something like that. Because I really love cosplay, and to have like a friend mm -hmm. that you're really comfortable with and you can trust and just do all kinds of silly things together with, it's just really, really, really fun to me. I wish I could do it more with other people. Yeah. Um, but I generally like do like the cosplay with Ying a lot more. Right? <laughs> um, uh, but then, yeah, we finally got the chance to do Beidou and Ningguang IRL. And I remember everyone is super happy about that. Mm. For some reason. I remember your comment. You're like, we are like the Beiguang yeah. to you. I, we've heard that by many people, actually. <laughs> we are like, everyone's title Beiguang. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's yeah, No, Beidou's been like, a, Beidou's been a great character to cosplay. She's like this really strong, very casual, uh, not like totally feminine, but very like beautiful at the same time type person, right? So I'm like, this is a character that I feel like I can portray really well. Oh. So I had tons of fun cosplaying Beto. Okay. The Navia cosplay was a total surprise that I ended up liking. Yeah. <laughs> was like, I did not expect to like this at all, but I did. It was very fun to wear. But yeah, no, cosplaying has been something I've enjoyed for many, many, many years, but I never really had like a friend to do it with mm -hmm. often. Uh, cause usually my friends would be doing their own thing and I'm not going to force anyone to do stuff with me. Right. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, I was able to do the costumes I did with Ying all the time, it was just like, I finally got to do this thing that I've always wanted to do. It just made me really, really happy to just be able to do any other cosplayers out there. <laughs> Shout out wanna, to you like, cosplayers. Do stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Hit up Rin <laughs> Yeah. I'm always looking for someone to hang out or with. Or leave, leave a cosplay. comment. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what should I cosplay next? Oh, that's a Leave good comment. question. <laughs> Who are you going to cosplay next? Oh, Kabe. Yes. He's here right now. <laughs> 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 it's funny because I never really got into doing guy cosplays, but after the Alhatham one, I was like, yo, you know what? This is kind of fun mm. because I'm just acting as a character. So I'm like, okay, I can do that. Mm. So I did Alhatham. I did Jing Yuan recently too. Right. Uh, so yeah, Kabe would probably be the next guy character. I think that even might be what Ying and I do next, Kavetham. But I think I might stick to being Navia. Yeah. A little bit more. Depends on which one I like more. I mean, we'll Navia is very fun. Yeah. I think like that. that is a lot of Genshin content and stuff mm. that we've covered right. and like i'm sure it's just going to bleed bleed more into like upcoming yeah, 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 conversation yeah, sure. of course because yeah like genshin podcasts and all that <laughs> genshin yeah, creators genshin and all that right um, yeah exactly <laughs> but from here i am interested in hearing about hmm. your basically hrt and identity oh. journey and do you want to like put this at a starting as a starting clip like your pronouns if that's something because if people are going to comment for example and then yeah that's actually something that i don't know how to handle right now because okay. my videos have gone viral again on youtube in place right? yeah people don't know that about me because i do use she her uh-huh but I definitely don't act like one typically, I guess you could say, because mm -hmm. a lot of it's, there's like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't sound like one, for instance, uh, and I still carry myself the same way as I always have been. Right. Yes. But yeah. Like, I, I don't like we could put it at the beginning. It probably makes sense. OK, right? I could like make that yeah. our intro clip. Can you pinpoint a time when you felt like for example like it's time to start hrt it's or i don't think yeah, this is I can. you can okay i can i can yeah i think any uh 
trans person would be happy to talk about their story personally. Okay. Right? Let's do it. Just no, like I understand like when you go to like someone who's transgender, you're kind of like the initial reaction most people be like you're stepping on eggshells being very careful about things yes. right off the bat. Like they don't want to offend them because I know they don't mean to be that, but they're unsure like how do you approach this? What can you say? What can you do? Like what kind of jokes can you do stuff like that, mm-hmm. right? Um I believe that most trans people are totally cool with being asked about their story. They'd be love to talk about it, I'm sure. At least I would. Okay. So. But for me in particular, because I was always a bit of a kind of just like gender fluid person growing up, right? But I didn't really think about it too much. I also don't like being told what to do and how to be either, right? I'm very, very against uh, things like that. Mm-hmm. 2022 it happened it was around ax time i believe july july yeah yeah it was around july something happened where i was asked to go do something but they also asked me to keep it conservative because they didn't want me to be like femme on whatever i was doing like representing it for them okay right they wanted to keep it as conservative as possible they were paying me and bringing me down to do all that, right? But at the same time, it didn't feel right with me, right? Mm. I don't feel good to represent a company that tells me, hey, I can't be like this. Okay. And that really had me thinking at that point, like, I really want to do this and I hate being told to do this. I don't like what they're trying to tell me to do and things. So I ended up canceling. I didn't want to do that. Actually, is it my time for my estrogen? Oh, okay. It's just a little pill. I'll do it later. It's fine. It's just like a little pill. If I put it in my, I can do it right now. Yeah, you can do it right now. Let's talk kind of weird for a bit. Oh, it's okay. This is estradiol. (laughs) It's a little green pill. This is what I have to take in the evening. In the morning, I take more pills. Oh. And I just place it under my tongue so it like absorbs faster into the blood. I see. So it just dissolves. So the company um didn't. Yeah, right. So I was just uh, not happy about being told to do that. Mm-hmm. So that had me really thinking like. It made me question myself. finally. like, am I trans? Like, I don't want to be this and I don't want to be like referred to that. And then at the time, I was kind of just like any pronouns at that point. But actually. Ying was really solid on only using she, her for me. And I remember that felt really good over and over again. Some of my fans would do that too. You, she, her. There's this kind of like this glow to it that I would feel right here. Like it felt like good. Okay. Right. Just this warm feeling of being, hearing that all the time. And then over time, like he and they and stuff like that started to feel very less connected, but she and her still felt really good. Okay. Um, so I had that thought a lot, but then the, the biggest obstacle was con- talking to my parents about it because for my entire life, I thought they weren't really, uh, with like transgender things and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, so here's my plan. Cause I was at a good position in my life at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, all right, they don't want it. Cut them off. Unfortunately, this is how it's going to be. And if they're okay with it, then cool. If we just continue as normal. So. I eventually finally talked to him about it. And thank God they were like, yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> I was like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> That's such <laughs> like a relief. I, for, for 35, 36 years of my life at that point, I was like, you were okay with this? They're like, yeah, we kind of knew. I was like, <laughs> 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 right? But my dad's like, yeah, just do it. Because he literally said YOLO to me. Wow. Quite literally. Yeah, he's like, you're. If you want to be happy, just do the things you want to do. Just go for Little it. Little dad. I was like, holy crap, are you serious? Because the biggest thing was like, when you do this, you will like get. Um, it'll be harder to have children, obviously, right? So I was like, I was always wondering, like, did they really want grandkids? And they're like, it's really up to you. It's your decision. It's not ours. Do whatever you want. I was like, all right. And then almost immediately after that, I started like looking into like, all right, well, how do I start this? How do I get into it? And then that took about three months. And then that one video I put out on the internet when I told everybody mm-hmm. uh, I was transitioning. And yeah, that was how I figured it out, I guess. Right. Oh. So yeah, at that point, I knew I was going to do it. It's just now I got to get started on it. Okay. So I'm wondering if that incident with the company never happened, would... Yeah, I don't know what would happen. That's the thing. Okay. I'll probably not be forced to think about it too hard. But who knows? Because... I've definitely been towing that line for as long as I have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then something really pushed me into really thinking about it one day. 
I mean, and then it just kind of fell into place. So <laughs> I remember um, before you did a lot of like Genshin character cosplays, you had yeah. like an was it an OnlyFans? Yes, I did. You, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, so I, I remember yep. that, right? Yeah. So yeah. you you were incredibly fluid. Like I was very fluid. I was. Dressing up in ways that most people wouldn't wear on the internet and show off. Yeah. It was very, like, not, like, completely nude, let's just say, right? Yeah. It was very it's very risque, like though, for sure. That kind of stuff. Yeah, very bourgeois type things, yeah. In fact, a lot of shady people, you know how OnlyFans is, they'll steal yeah. the stuff and they'll go post it on the internet somewhere, right? Yeah. It's still out there on, like, a bunch of leaked websites, mm -hmm. but I... I tried to do something about that, but I can't. So I just tried not to let it get to me. Like, if you find it, yeah, that was my life back then. So what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So that, yeah. So you, you have been towing the line and you were forced to think about mm. it. And then that like pushed yeah. everything. Yeah. Is there any other situation or event that could have forced you to think about that? Oh, plenty. Okay. <laughs> plenty of things. Probably when I was younger, though. I can't necessarily remember the details for it, but I remember, like, you know, just kind of going through the motions growing up. I would stop and think, like, am I trans? Should I do this? Mm -hmm. But I'm also just, like, I'm kind of just, like, whatever. It doesn't bother me that much. So I just kind of continue on with whatever I was doing at the time. Did you grow up in uh, an environment that did open you up to that idea? I'm not sure because I went to a Roman Catholic private school <laughs> <laughs> from, like, kindergarten to grade nine. Okay. And then public school from then on which was which helped me be a little bit more open about okay. it in public school so maybe it was just repression for all these years because <laughs> even in those years i would be sneaky and like you know steal my mom's or my sister's clothes and wear it when they're not yeah. home and things like that right just to kind of like get that fix that i need so i can feel like myself yeah uh so but yeah i've been doing that all my life i remember like times when i was like nine years old and my parents they would leave me at home by myself because you know they won't know i wouldn't do anything bad. <laughs> I'd just stay home and play video games or something like that right yeah. so they would go to like another city to like do like whatever they were doing mm -hmm. and then i'd be left by myself so that gave me like all the time in the world to explore myself at the same time wow right so but yeah i've been doing that for or like forever right and then eventually i was able to finally tell my first friends that i did something like mm -hmm. that which was very scary because I remember the first time I got caught like that was actually by my dad, which was what solidified this idea that they weren't cool with it. Uh -huh. But they caught me when I was like six wearing a dress, literally in the closet. <laughs> right. So they pulled me out of there and like giving me that kind of lecture, like boys clothes are for boys, uh, girls clothes are for girls. Okay. All that told me was be better at hiding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I just got better at being sneaky. At least I thought I did, mm. right? But when I finally was able to tell some friends that I did like cross-dressing, I guess the better term for it, mm. that I could do that, they were chill, chill with it, mm -hmm. right? So it gave me like a group of friends to just kind of like be myself around and like explore it a little bit more. And then, yeah, just over the years, cosplaying helped that a lot, right? Because you can kind of do it. But as a cosplay, it yeah. wasn't necessarily like weird that way, right? Yeah. So you got to like dress up as a character uh but and then i would just like find, find other ways to kind of like push that boundary like okay how much more feminine can i look and then that, that's where the, like the whole only fans kind of like came in because mm. yeah if you've seen my photos from like maybe like three years ago it's like holy crap rin used to look like that <laughs> <laughs> right because i really went hard on like just making it like look really good yeah you did uh, yeah so um yeah that just came around even only fans i made like a little bit of a living off of too i was making more on there than twitch and youtube at a point i could have taken that career further if i wanted to but why did you stop? just trying to be being sexy all the time is exhausting okay that's right? fair having to do that and then like most of the people that were on that were really good they're really cool very respectful about it mm -hmm. and all that right but there were some people that kind of ruined that experience mm -hmm. which turned me off from like even going back on there again okay so that's fair yeah, then it's not, so I just stopped doing that. In fact, I've even, I haven't done like boudoir stuff in like years now. I'm kind of shy to <laughs> actually. Okay. Right? I still can't believe it. like I used to do that. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. So you made that video um, announcing. Yes. How has that experience been doing it so publicly? I was fine with it, actually. I wasn't afraid of that, about like how people would react because I knew everyone had my back on it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I like it. Honestly, 
I know some people would coin the terms like, oh, okay, do you know about like uh, egg IRL or jokes like that or things? No. You know what that term is? Okay, so in the trans community, an egg is a person that does not realize they're trans yet and they will slowly kind of like hatch out of oh. it, right? So there's all these kind of like jokes and memes that come from it. It's not necessarily a good thing, but I think it's a great coping mechanism for younger people to kind of like deal with it because, uh, you know, just in life in general, some people just aren't in the perfect situation to grow up in it or express themselves like that. Mm -hmm. So they just kind of like make some humor behind like, oh, this egg or whatever, like whatever. As long as people don't take it like seriously, it's fine. Yeah. But I don't like pushing that on people either. So a lot of people did that to me like, oh, Rin finally came out of her shell or whatever right and i don't like that because i was still happy with who i was before then and not really like kind of like uh not happy with my gender at that time yeah i was just quite comfortable with who i am and then the moment when people make it sound like they know me more than myself mm. is what really like kind of boils my blood like, i don't like hearing that at all um okay because i think gender is just a journey for everybody it could just happen like one day you'll just be different. Like same with sexuality. Like it would just like be like this and then all of a sudden you're this. So because you said that you were already very comfortable with your gender mm. and how you were yeah. prior to starting HRT and transitioning, what is mm. the most significant change or benefit that you get from transitioning? Oh, just looking more feminine, I guess. Because yeah, when like even off HRT, I had like very masculine features, mm -hmm. even though I was able to like disguise and hide them a lot more mm -hmm. uh but compared to how i used to look then and now it is very different actually oh. very subtle changes but only if you know like how i used to look then and now mm -hmm. you can kind of see the differences i see the differences now which is insane i remember there's this i remember i was just like sitting at my desk just like working and like my hair down like this yeah and i was just like doing whatever just like there and then i had obs on because i was like going through scenes or something and my camera was on and then i looked over and it was like <laughs> I look different. I like how I look though. I even made a short about that too, just like talking about how happy I was about that point. Mm -hmm. Uh and then I just posted it and people are like just very happy to see. I see the uh, side by sides and at that yeah, point yeah. like it's 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 starts getting evident like how you're physically yeah. changing. Actually, it's been 450 days today you caught me on to do this. Yeah. So <laughs> happy 450 days. So Thank you. <laughs> it's it's crazy to think like it's been 450 days now since then. That's nuts. Yeah. Right. So yeah. how long but, does it usually take? Oh, I made a whole video about that too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um you're so you, when you transition, you have to go see a um what do you call them? It's like a psychiatrist, I think. Okay. Basically they want to talk to you so you fully understand what you're doing and what you're getting into, right? Okay. And to make sure that you're making the decision from, like, the right mindset, I guess, right? So I remember when they interviewed me, I was like, when we got through the interview, like, you're the easiest person I've talked to this about. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I pretty much made up my mind on this, right? Uh -huh. So, yeah. So when I went to go see my endocrinologist, they would show me, like, this list of, okay, so here's the list of side effects and the years it would take for each thing to happen, right? And obviously, mileage may vary across different people. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is like there's different things like breast growth, hair redis well, hair not loss, but it, it stops, right? In fact, like some of my hairline even kind of came back because of it, okay. which is insane. Uh, -huh. <laughs> uh other things like you would like you wouldn't be or what's how do I describe it? Fertility is lower for sure. Okay. Uh and a bunch of other things about the body that just like just change um with various things. The reason why I did this because as I was getting older, obviously I would stop looking feminine. And I think that's what kind of scared me too a little oh. bit. Because I wanted to keep this up. So yeah, then I just went for it. And I was very skeptical too. It was like, how different am I gonna look? Because I already kind of look it anyway. So what is this gonna do for me? Okay. Happily, it has <laughs> changed quite a bit for me, right? So I was like, okay, I'm very happy about it. I guess just because I have this vision of myself that I want to look like, and I'm happier when I look like this, mm -hmm. right? But even the funny thing about since transitioning, I used to like lean either super feminine or super masculine, depending on my like my mood that mm -hmm. day, right? From what I was, because I would, I would consider myself gender fluid back then. Yeah. So whenever I wanted to be femme, I would be like way into mm -hmm. it. If I wanted to be mask, I'd be way into it. 
now I feel like very like down the center mm. kind of thing because I'm not really feminine nor am I really like masculine. I feel I have this like kind of this happy medium and I'm very happy with how I am and how I look. When I started, gender just stopped being a thing in my head. Like I stopped thinking about okay. it. This is like this weight off my shoulders. Like finally, I'm kind of just happy with the labels that I've given myself yeah. now. I can just focus on other things. But as time has gone on, I can understand why transgender people like to talk and be happy and to share their success and things like that with other people just because they're living it they're experiencing they get to have this new life yeah that they should have had from the beginning um so yeah for me it's just it, every day has just been like wow i'm still doing this <laughs> and things are changing and like it can only get better for me at this point right yeah <laughs> so, and, and that's yeah, that's amazing so. that you are just that you still continue to discover like new things about yeah, it and yeah, like about yourself for sure and I am yeah. curious, do you wish you had done it earlier? Yeah, I kind of do wish I had done it earlier just so I could, you know, because I'm getting older. I'm like 37 right mm -hmm. now. Uh, I wish I could have done it earlier just so, you know, I can have more of those experiences, longer, youthful kind of appearance, right? Because I am getting old, so just not being able to do as much as I used to. But like, it doesn't matter anyway. I can just still do whatever I want. I know for sure that for the longest time, I want to look more feminine than I do masculine. Okay. And I think that's like, all right, I'll take HRT to like, kind of help me out like that but i don't think i would have taken hrt if i didn't want to like be called like she her or anything like that but it just kind of feels right this way i don't know how to describe it okay yeah it just feels more correct this way and i'm happier too because of it yeah so, can't really say no to it now <laughs> yeah i mean i yeah. i feel like there doesn't need to be any other justification other than like it feels right or like this is yeah how even if i wasn't doing it i would still call myself trans right mm -hmm. the moment i came to that kind of conclusion the decision that i wanted to do this was the day i was trans rather than wait until i was on pills mm -hmm. i started hrt for 400, 450 days but i've been trans for like way longer than that yeah so would you you say that that's like the day you started being trans and well i don't know how that is for like the wider trans community if there is like a day where that starts or where you start being it's it's a journey for sure it's a journey about self-discovery also okay. transgender is just like a uh it's an umbrella term like okay. even non-binary people fall under that too oh uh, not many people associate with that because when they think transgender you have to go from one end to the other kind of thing i right? see you can't be in between or anything like that but it's still like non-binary non-binary people are very very valid about that they're you're, they're allowed to yeah yeah <laughs> and so they're allowed to be there they're allowed to call themselves trans as well okay um but yeah i think like the moment you come to that decision about yourself that this is how you look at yourself mm -hmm. that's kind of like when it starts mm -hmm. uh everything else is just like how do you get there how do you change your appearance because anyone could look however they want i would say like some people don't look their gender i guess you could say by conventional standards mm -hmm. Um, but they still are who they are mm -hmm. so okay yeah like me like again i don't really carry myself as like the typical girl i still act very much like how i do with the boys and everything like that and i get like people will get confused by that when they only see and hear me for the first time because they just assume right away i'm this a lot of my friends will do that too right they just use he by accident but they're very like quick about correcting it which i appreciate very much like they're making that effort mm -hmm. like i guess even at the same time gender doesn't really matter it's just a thing labels are just as important as not having a label they're both very valid however you want to identify yourself ultimately it's none of anyone's business mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah you're not judging someone you shouldn't be judging someone based on their gender at all or sexuality they're just a person yeah that shouldn't matter at all kind of thing right yeah this is just how i want to live that's kind of how like I wanted to like get into content creation too because there wasn't a lot of like gender queer people, gender fluid people in the space, mm. especially the video gaming space yeah, and definitely. YouTube. Right. So I wanted to be kind of like that kind of person that was there. Like I'm this, but I also just play video games. So you don't have to worry about this part of me, but just focus on whatever I'm doing. Yeah. Kind of so, and I'm I guess I got there. I'm there right now. So. Yeah, you did. I mean Yeah. I mean there. <laughs> <laughs> there there are a lot of things to know you by just by you being yourself you know like before yeah. even before you started hrt even before anyone yeah. like touches on gender or anything like that so thank you for clarifying a lot of that it does have to do with identity it is going to be like a huge range of like mm -hmm. opinions experiences and where you yeah. would like place yourself or how you would consider yourself so yeah. like definitely um an entire range of stuff um, yeah, I would say like my own fan base of the transgender group, mm -hmm. a lot of them are trans mask, actually. Oh, 
right? Yeah. I don't really see a lot of trans femme people in my, uh, like, more active community. They're probably there, just probably more silent about mm -hmm. it. But I think more often than not, I run into more trans mask people. Okay. In the space, right? Which is interesting, but kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Right? <laughs> well, I don't actually don't know how you how you feel about this. How do you feel about um about uh, being trans being like a central part of your I identity as a creator? Like, if someone goes to you and you're like, oh, that you're that trans creator, I, how would that make? I you think feel? it's important for sure because a lot of the video game space is dominated by cis men, yeah, cis women too, even like, mm -hmm. um, I don't even. There's probably a few other trans creators in the Genshin space, but I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't anyone in the Genshin space that I can think of is very like, you can, I don't like the phrase it like this, but you can tell they're trans like right away. Okay. Like, they're you can, like right off the bat. Yeah. Um, but I think over time, like actually for me, <laughs> in one of the shorts that I posted, um, it had like me as like now in there, like showing up in like a face cam, right? Mm -hmm. People could not tell what I was because ah. they would hear my voice, but they were very confused by how I looked. <laughs> and it's just this, right? Yeah. Which is crazy because like I finally looked like a girl to like the regular person just watching this, yeah. but they're so confused about what I actually am. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, cool, HRT is working. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I am becoming that kind of very visibly trans person in the space yeah. now. And that's kind of what I want because I would like to think that. I can represent a part of the community that often gets disrespected, but I want to prove to everyone that we are no different than anyone else. This whole thing about gender and things in the gaming space does not matter, but people always make it such a big deal all the time. <laughs> and it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do I do like what you said about how this whole gender thing doesn't matter yeah. in this space. Because mm. like it does matter, but not in the way that you think it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. You know, like it is important mm -hmm. to right. have like a variety and a representation within the community, but yeah. it's not something that you're always going people shouldn't to... people shouldn't just look at you and judge you and like discount you for what you yeah, are yeah right and like fixate on but it. it's important for us to exist there yes. you especially like women in the space trans people in the space it's important to show that people can do this and be happy with what they're doing yes right it's not just these people that are there there's people just like us we like to play video games and we like to talk about it exactly at the same time you have to understand not everyone is gonna be like on the ball with it and some people are just going to be rude. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, because a lot of uh, the people in my community face those struggles. Like the people around them don't accept them for who they are. They're not a really like a friendly place for it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, people should be treated with respect. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want. Um, but I'm more of a I don't know what the word is, but I'm realistic about this approach. Mm -hmm. I just know people are going to be not good. Mm -hmm. So you have to have uh, backup plans for everything. And you just have to know when to pick, like, like a battle, I guess you could say. Uh, like, when do you really want to, like, dig into this? Is it worth it? Yeah. Should you even bother? Stuff like that, right? Yeah. So often I tell people to protect themselves first. Yeah. And try to get to a point where you are able to independently live on your own and protect yourself before you do anything crazy. Because it's not fun when you're set back in some kind of horrifying way. If you decide to go do something and someone else tries to hurt you or do something to you because of it, mm. right? I don't know. I just, you know, just lay low until you're safe and then you can enjoy the rest of your life. Honestly, that's another thing. Because I started late. A lot of people are wondering, like, is it too late for me? Like, should I start yeah. now? It's like, I never think it's too late. It's just like, do it when you're ready and comfortable and ready to go. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's a really important point about safety and security. Yeah, um, Like both in physical in IRL and online yeah well it is realistic like unfortunately it is it does benefit you to be realistic about the whole situation yeah. and other like, people's reactions to it and I th mm. I think that was like my main concern in asking you how it was like dealing with you know, disrespectful people and like shitty comments and those who well I used to be very toxic about it because I don't think the way of doing it is sharing those comments on your platform so people can you know join you in the dunking or whatever <laughs> like that right just don't give them the platform at all mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think the worst thing that can happen to anyone is they're being ignored. Mm. No one's giving them any acknowledgement. Yeah. So you can just do that to them by just deleting it, blocking or whatever. Just do not ever bring it up. Do not respond to it. Nothing. Give it no energy. Yeah. Right. And they can't do anything. Literally, they can't. Yeah. So it's just like, don't engage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do not engage. If you're a creator, you get negative comments. Do not engage. Yeah. If you get comments that are like being legitimate and like questioning and like, you know, they have like a good question to ask mm. you and they present it in a nice way, mm -hmm. then you can engage. Right. Yeah. But I think over the years, you can tell right away when people are being kind of like, you know, they're probably trying to like kick the bee's nest and see what <laughs> can happen. You know, <laughs> there was, oh my God, there's this one guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I remember this one stream he came in and. I don't know if you've had this experience, but there's some people that come to streams and they're just a little too chatty and a little too forward, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Right? They kind of ask too many personal questions. Okay. And kind of talk like you're not there to others. Okay. Like they're asking questions of streamer to streamer, but not really. And I always find that really annoying. Uh -huh. But there's this one guy that was in my stream years ago and I called him out for it because, you know, he was like dunking me. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to dunk you back. <laughs> right. Like if you're going to bite, I'm going to bite. Mm. And so I did. And he got very upset because I did that because I guess I embarrassed him too hard. <laughs> right? So he's had this vendetta against me even till now. Wow. Like he'll find me in videos that I comment in like the old stuff like Love Live. Mm. He'll go find my comment and just like start yelling at me about stuff. So I blocked him off my YouTube channel because he kept doing that. He kept like leaving these really bad comments. Yeah. But every year I like to clear out my ban list. I'm like, all right, let's clear it out. Let's start fresh. Let's see what's going on. Oh. He would be back there again, still doing the same thing. Wow. I'm just like, get a life, man. Like, what is wrong with wow. you? Wow. <laughs> Over that one time I decided to dunk back. So I try not to dunk on people very much because I know it can be kind of embarrassing when all of a sudden the focus is on you all of a sudden yeah. in a negative way. Uh -huh. Try not to do that. But if you're going to continue to badger me about it, you better be able to handle yeah. it. Yeah. Because if you can, then don't do it. Yeah. Thank right? gosh. And like, that's so, that's a weird obsession. Of, like, it was very end. weird. Yes. If, if they yeah. keep coming back. Oh, my goodness. That's kind yeah. of yeah, I, low key scary. There's this, like, yeah. There's this one video I commented on in the Love Life space. Like, it came out like maybe like six months ago. Mm -hmm. Found my comment. He's right there yelling at me about something. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Damn. Yeah, we've covered a lot, actually. And actually, like, I am still processing it because I think you might actually be the first trans person I've had this long of a conversation with oh. regarding <laughs> the topic of gender. Cool. I have met, um, you know, people who identify as like non-binary or who have fluid relationships with gender. Um, yeah. But I don't know. This that has never come up in conversation. I, I guess I never thought to ask like i get it like it's not something you generally ask like a cis person like how's being a guy <laughs> today or how's being a woman today right you wouldn't ask that normally of a person yeah uh so i can understand that kind of going to like trans people because especially it could be kind of touchy when you like touch on things that maybe they don't want to talk about because yeah. again yeah like i'm my own experiences i know maybe some trans people will have very different experiences for me maybe they want to talk about it maybe they have their own thoughts about it who knows right but yeah at least for me, I feel like I can come out with uh, my experiences and be open about it and just kind of talk about them as like as neutral as I can. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm grateful yeah. for that because I've never had this conversation with like another person. Like when Ying and I talked about it in the one video we did, a lot of people love to hear that conversation. Yeah. So we even have this uh, thing that we do every once in a while. This. Uh, OK, so for on Ying's side, they do an ace podcast where they talk about asexuality. Yeah. And things like related to that, if we have like people on there that uh, identify on that spectrum kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and on my end, I started a podcast for trans people, Ooh. but not just like me. Like, so I had three people, including myself on there. So four, mm -hmm. sorry, <laughs> four people, including myself on there. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're very different experiences. So we had me trans femme, yeah. but I'm very like kind of like mask at the same time presenting and talking. Okay. And a trans femme friend who is very trans femme okay. or very femme, sorry, right? Mm -hmm. And then two trans mask people, but one was still very feminine and one was definitely very mask. Wow. Right? So you had like this range of experiences that I could like just bring and we'd talk about like how we discover trans, our, our trans identity and our experiences growing up. That's amazing. So it was a very fun like three hour chat. We yeah. Had, yeah. So we have these like podcasts on our own channels that people can watch anytime if they want to. Okay. 
I'm gonna yeah. I'll I'll leave the link to that in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ying's and then mine. I think Ying's has it on their YouTube, and I have mine on. Yeah, mine's on YouTube too. Yeah, because I that was the time when they let Twitch stream into YouTube, so that was a great oh, way of saving. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, okay. I will yeah. leave those links below. Um, if you are listening, uh, if you are still listening to this this podcast yeah. episode in particular, uh, let me know how you feel about this topic and if you of course they will be listening <laughs> this is where all the repeat will show up in that graph like the most repeated part you know that average review duration they'll mm -hmm. go like yeah, yeah like that <laughs> yeah yeah it's gonna go like that and that's how it's gonna go <laughs> and I, like i'm glad that you do have like more content on the topic for those who do are looking for more hmm. content on the topic because yeah. i would love to talk about it more for sure but youtube's like no 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 you do that no 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 we're gonna push you down the ranking of the algorithm i don't know how it works right but yeah i might open up a second channel for it actually because i might label this channel as the genshin channel finally oh. and then put all my other content on a new channel i don't want to do that but these days you have to yeah like i'm just been like putting it off for too long <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i think that that draws this podcast episode to a close and before uh i do wrap up Rin, please plug yourself. I'm Rin Taicho, the Amber Main mm -hmm. cosplayer and a Love Life fan. I name the Rebirth group in the Nijigasanki uh, group of Love Life girls, if anyone out there knows who that is. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, literally everywhere. You just type my name. I'll be there, Rin Taicho. Uh, I'm practically on any, everything. You can even find things from me in the past, I'm sure, out on the internet if you want to know what I was like before. Make sure you're in, not in public. Do that, just, <laughs> in case, <laughs> right? just in case. Just in case, right? Like if you do a Google image search and you scroll down a little bit too far, you might run into something. I'm just putting that out. <laughs> so, like, I'm not ashamed. Like, I threw those pictures out there. I don't care. I was very proud of how I looked. Mm. You should be. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, I just I just stream and play game and go to work and sleep and wake up, and here I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so very relatable. Yeah, well, very relatable. Thank you so much, Rin, for coming onto this podcast and like sharing all this stuff, ranging indeed from Genshin to gaming to stories, and it's been wonderful listening to everything you had to say and had to share, and I would love to have you on again in the future thank you for having me i hope i get to do something with you or i interview you next time because usually i'm the host not the guest Aha, the turns table <laughs> aha. aha we will have to figure something out sometime All right. for sure. i'm sure people would love to see a sevi interview oh they have to okay <laughs> we'll yeah. see well, i hope so <laughs> i'll make them make sure they will see it <laughs> Thank you yep. so much, Rin, and thank you yep. to you listening. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're listening there, or uh, download on Spotify or follow on Spotify, I guess, and leave a comment. We have lots of things to comment on our recent gender topic, what Rin is going to cosplay next, and all that yes. fun stuff. Thank you so much, and yes. I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.